we begin here with what's been called forbidden tourism. Travelers, many of them young, visiting countries that are considered way off limits. The world of extreme tourism is under increasing scrutiny tonight after the death of an American college student named Otto Warmbier, who died after 17 months in custody in North Korea. One more time. This video among the last images of then 21-year-old Otto Warmbier before he was detained in North Korea, a country that has been dubbed the Hermit Kingdom. Well, Otto's a young, thrill-seeking, great kid who was going to be in that part of the world for a college experience and said, hey, uh, I've heard some friends who have done this. I would like to do this. But after allegedly stealing a propaganda poster from a hotel in Pyongyang and being sentenced to 15 years hard labor. Please save my life. Please think of my family. Warmbier fell into a coma during his 17 months in custody, returning back to the U.S. last week in what doctors called a state of unresponsive wakefulness. Six days later, he died. His parents wrote in a statement, Otto has completed his journey home. This case has raised so many questions, including what exactly happened to Warmbier while in custody? How will this impact the already high tensions between the U.S. and this rogue nuclear power? And should Americans be allowed to travel to North Korea? Otto Warmbier arranged his visit through a company called Young Pioneer Tours, based in China. On its website, the company touts itself as a budget operation, offering trips to places, quote, your mother would rather you stayed away from. On Twitter, they've posted pictures of customers skiing in Iran and visiting a weapon repair shop in Erbil, Iraq. And then there's this post asking if you fancy a weekend getaway with a difference in Chernobyl. The North Koreans lure Americans to travel to North Korea via tour groups out, run out of China who advertise slick ads on the Internet proclaiming no American ever gets detained off of our tours and this is a safe place to go. Today, our producer went to the office of Young Pioneer Tours in Xi'an, China, looking for answers about what went wrong on Warm Beer's trip. So I'm with uh, ABC News. We've been trying to call for the longest time. Uh, can we talk to you guys? No. Can we, can we talk to, is there anyone available to talk to on camera? No, we've released a statement and um, uh, that's all I have to say. See are, you pushing, are you seriously pushing me out? I'm not, I just asked nicely. At the time of Otto Warmbier's trip, Young Pioneer Tours described their excursions to North Korea online as extremely safe and answered this question, I'm American, is this a problem? With a chipper, not at all. The company's YouTube page shows Westerners appearing to revel in their new cultural experiences in North Korea, from running the Pyongyang Marathon <laughs> to observing daily life on the city streets. But earlier this week, the company told ABC News in a statement that it will no longer organize tours for Americans to North Korea. Quote, there had not been any previous detainment in North Korea that has ended with such tragic finality, and we have been struggling to process the result. Now the assessment of risk for Americans visiting North Korea has become too high. The company also offered condolences to Warm Beer's loved ones, saying... We had held on to hope that he might recover. We, too, are reeling with the shock of a young man's life taken well before his time. Warmbier was just one of hundreds of Americans who travel to North Korea every year. North Korea has been on my bucket list for some time. Andrew Byrne went to North Korea just a few months ago on a young pioneer tour, even while Otto Warmbier was being held captive. People were very clear uh, that any deviation from what's expected of you could result in being detained or worse. They were not shy about letting us know that, that we, it's very important that we behave as instructed. These are tightly controlled tours. These are tours that earn hard currency for the Kim regime. It's uh, spent on weapons, nuclear weapons, ballistic missiles. It's spent on keeping the elites happy. This week, Young Pioneer Tours announced it will no longer be bringing Americans traveling on U.S. passports to North Korea. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department is now warning Americans to stay away, citing serious risk of arrest and long-term detention. And officials are considering banning all travel there for U.S. citizens.
In reality, one small mistake can have disastrous consequences when traveling in dangerous countries. Do you have any indications that you will, you're going to get released? Do you have any indications from Iranian government? No. In 2009, these three Americans, Sarah Shord, her boyfriend Shane Bauer, and their friend Joshua Fatal, were captured hiking along the Iranian border and charged with espionage. Shord spent more than a year in an Iranian prison, partially in solitary confinement, before being released on humanitarian grounds. I stand before you today only one-third free. It took another full year for Fatal and Bauer to be freed. Despite the risks, more and more people are drawn to extreme travel. According to one study, adventure tourism is a $263 billion a year industry. And some people are truly eager to push the limits. This is Andrew Drury's idea of a good vacation. Here we could be targets for the snipers at any, any time. Over the years, Drury says he's spent holidays in hot spots all over the world, including Afghanistan, Chechnya, and Mogadishu, Somalia. And I went to the first time to Mogadishu around about Christmas time, and then I, I can remember saying goodbye to my children, and actually thinking for the first time I could be saying goodbye for the last time. He told ABC's Lama Hassan that he went because he wanted to find the wreckage of the Black Hawk Down helicopter. So that is the Black Hawk. That is. You do realize you're risking your life by doing something like that. Yeah, of course. Drury embarks on these journeys despite the misgivings. Hey, Ruby. <laughs> of his wife and children in Surrey, England. I would prefer him to stop, but I think I'd be changing him completely if I made him stop. He takes his life into his own hands on trips like this one to Iraq. Ahead is ISIS held territory. Those flags there are the black recognizable flags. Where he saw the front line in the battle against ISIS. Someone's been shot on this side of the front line, so we're pretty much under attack now. I didn't feel threatened, and even when the gunfire happened, they seemed to be going about their jobs, and I was kind of drawn into the situation. We were returning fire. I hate to say it, I really did enjoy it, and the adrenaline, the buzz, and since I've come back, I haven't slept for three days. The cost of this trip, around $2,800, including airfare. Back here in the United States, Otto's funeral is scheduled for tomorrow at the same high school in Wyoming, Ohio, where just four short years ago, he delivered this inspiring yet prophetic graduation speech. But there is also a different kind of goodbye, a farewell to something larger than just a friend. I wish there was a way to know that you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. And we want to remind you to tune into 2020 this Friday night for an investigation into the unknown details of that American student's death and his detainment in North Korea.